Hi everyone, Shauna Carpellis here. I wanted to talk about um, this hot news coming out of the state bar where there are a group of deans from law schools all over the state of California that have petitioned the state Supreme Court, um, I believe it was last week or just a few days ago, to put a temporary um, hold on the current grading curve of the California State Bar Exam and lower the state's requirements until the state can do an investigation and see why California examiners are not passing the bar exam. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on this one. I could probably talk for days on my position um, and where I stand on each of the points, but I'll give you a brief overview and I think this makes for a good discussion. Um, I've been doing bar prep for almost eight years and so I have a lot of insight into where examiners are by the time they graduate law school. And I'm talking about applicants from top tier schools all the way to the lower tier schools and online programs. Um, I've always been a pretty firm believer that obviously the state bar here is hard in the sense of their grading protocol. So I do agree with the deans that there has to be some reevaluation of the way that the California um, exam is processed and the grading protocol because it doesn't make sense that other states um, are showing a much higher passage rate and California consistently just gets lower and lower. We saw in July 2016, last July, um, I believe a 44% passage rate, which the low, is the lowest that it has been in about 32 years. ABA approved uh, schools and applicants, first time takers from those schools had about a 60 or so percent passage, which, which was a little bit higher, but still pretty low in comparison to states like New York, Chicago, Florida, um, and so on and so forth. So we want to definitely pay attention and bring this to the forefront. Now, I've been talking about this for a long time with my colleagues and applicants and friends um, and really being frustrated as a bar tutor where I see very bright individuals who really know their stuff go into the exam and then end up not passing by 20 points or five points. I mean, there's really no excuse for that. So I do think there has to be some type of um, investigation to make sure that the protocol is legit and it is not too subjective and that the graders on the exam, I mean, one thing that I think the deans, um, I read their petition and one thing that I don't think they're bringing up is the fact that if you go into a reread and for those that have never taken the exam um, or become a repeater, probably don't know what that is, but on the written portion in the old format, if you hit a 1390 out of a 1440 writing score, you went into a reread. So what that means is that another grader takes a look at your stuff. And the discrepancy that we see in the grading from sometimes applicants getting a 70 or 75 on a first read going all the way down to let's say a 50 or 55 on a second read really makes no sense. Um, I mean, that's to me is pretty subjective grading. So to make my point clear, I agree that the grading standard needs to be reevaluated. However, with that being said, I do think that the deans also need to take some accountability. I mean, it doesn't make sense that an applicant coming out of UCLA law school or really any law school, it doesn't matter the tier, does not know how to brief a case for the performance test. Um, I know that there is some fear factor involved and anxiety that takes place, but it, it really does not make sense that I've dealt with so many applicants that cannot quickly go through a file to determine what the relevant facts are. So I do think it's important that the deans take accountability. I think it's important that the grading be reevaluated. And then there is some blame going on bar preps. I definitely think that um, you know, we're always reevaluating our standards and making sure that our applicants are getting the best type of preparation. But of course, I would always take any accountability necessary to improve and any feedback. However, I know that my course um, that only caters maybe 100, 150 students a year, nothing in comparison to the other big courses, um, they really never take any accountability. And that I think is a huge issue that needs reevaluation as well. Because if law schools are going to be 
backing these corporate bar preps in the first and second year uh, years of law students' um, studies and promoting these schools, then they have to be accountable for, you know, if a, if a class of 75 applicants take Barbary and three to four applicants pass, that's a problem and that needs some evaluating. So I think it's important that the law schools um, not only look into their curriculum, especially in the third or if there is a fourth year of the studies, and look to see how they can potentially help applicants get a head start on some preparation, maybe utilizing smaller bar prep tutors and, and those that have been in the game for a while and really know the bar in California in and out, particularly the written portion, to make sure that applicants in their third year are starting to learn the format and how the exam tests these areas in, on the essay portion and the performance test portion as well, how the PT uh, structure should be. And then also, I think it's important that bar preps are reevaluated, especially the big ones that get the biggest influx. We're talking thousands of California bar applicants per year. I think it's really important that those bar preps are reevaluated and their curriculum is reevaluated to make sure that it is California specific and that they really are giving applicants the attention that they need. And it's not just a mill where, which is basically what it is now. And I went to one of those, so I can attest to that as well, even though I've worked with, you know, 600 or so applicants that have also gone to those companies um, and need to need to do some, a better job at, at really helping people pass the exam if they are going to promote themselves to be the place to go and the preparation to be. And they're not cheap either. Um, so people then, applicants then have to, go and take the bar again because the preparation is not stellar, then they find me. And of course they have to pay again for a bar prep, which is really a disservice. So another thing um, to think about is those programs that are being promoted in your schools, they're not the only programs out there. And if you are the type that needs, uh, and most people are with this exam because the grading is so strong uh, and, and hard, they do need a little bit more handholding and personalized attention so that when you hit those areas that you're not clear on, you get clarity. Because if you don't and you just push it to the side and you don't know how to approach certain things, if it comes up on the exam, you won't pass it. And no one really can afford in a lot of different ways, mentally, uh, emotionally, and financially to take this exam again and again and again. So the goal is obviously to take it once and one time only. But back to my main point of making this vi uh, video here, um, the deans do have a point in the overview. They do have a point, um, but I think their point needs to be broadened and I think they need to expand it to look at other aspects uh, and not just blame the state bar for their hard grading because I took a three-day bar and I passed my first time and a lot of my colleagues did as well, and it is doable, but there has to be a lot of, there, there, basically there's, there's a lot of different points to hit. It's not just the grading from the state bar. Um, but if they do make the grading a little bit easier, it definitely could be a good thing for my applicants, and I would be completely in support of that as well. If you have any questions or you wanna engage in some dialogue on this, please uh, give your feedback below. I'm really curious to see what um, you have to say. All right, have a great day, bye.